So in sections 3.1 through 3.3, we've talked about how to find the center and spread for both simple data sets and then more complicated frequency distributions and relative frequency distributions. Now in section 3.4, we want to take it back to the individual and want to think about position, measures of position. So when you get an exam back in a class, the first things you look at are your score, and then you want to know the average of the class, right? Well, why does that matter to you where the average was? And the answer is because you want to compare yourself to everybody else. You want a way to judge your position in the class based on your score and the average. So let's do a little thought experiment here. Suppose you get an exam back and you find that you got a 70%. How do you feel about your score? Explain. So I have here that you feel sad, right? Thank you to Google Hangouts for my emoticons over here, All right? Because that's the lowest possible score that's pa still passing. I mean, you're not too sad because you passed, but still, you'd like a higher grade. And this is really dangerously close to not passing. So I have you under the saddie face here. All right, but now suppose I further inform you that the mean on this exam was 60. Well, wait a second. I, you scored a 70. The mean was a 60. Now you're thinking, ah, that's a little bit better, right? Not still great, but you know that you did better than the average student in the class. So that means that somewhere around 50% at least of the students did worse than you. So, hey, you know, yes, I barely passed, but at least I did better than half the class. Let's take it one step further, because that's just dealing with the mean. What if we knew the standard deviation? Suppose I further inform you that the standard deviation on this exam was 10%. Now how do you feel? All right, well, pretty good, because I'm thinking, all right, if it's 10, then I scored 70. The mean was 60, so I was 10 above the mean. And if I'm 10 above the mean and the standard deviation is worth 10, then I was one standard deviation above the mean which is pretty good, right? I'm feeling even better about myself, right? But wait, what if I tell you instead that the standard deviation on the exam was 5%? I was wrong, it was 5%. And that would make you happy, really happy, right? Because that means that you scored two standard deviations above the mean. That's really good. That's unusually high. Now, where do I get the two? Well, it's because you scored a 70. The mean was 60. That means you scored 10 above the mean. But the standard deviation was worth 5. 10 divided by 5 means 2. So you were two standard deviations above the mean for your score. That's basically right on the verge of unusually high. Right, because we said um, being more than two standard deviations was unusually high. So you're unusual. Two or more is unusual, and that's really good. Right, That shows that not only did you do better than most of the class, but you did quite a bit better than most of the class, even though your score was only a 70. Right? Now, this calculation that I'm using in here in order to discuss how happy or sad we are is called a z-score calculation. And you can use it with a population values or with sample values. It doesn't really change the effect of how it works. So the z-score is the difference between your value, x, and the mean. So you take the difference between your value and the mean, and you divide by the standard deviation. So either one of these would work for what we were doing here. So you take your score of 70, you subtract away 60, and you divide by 5. So or if that was a population, it's still 70, take away 60, divide by 5, right? All right, so the two formulas, like I just said, are essentially equivalent. Use whichever one is more appropriate for your problem. So if your data set is population, then use the one on the left. If it's sample, use the one on the right. It won't really change much one way or the other. Now, z-scores tell us how far a particular x value is equal to, below, or above the mean. If you're equal to the mean, your z-score will be 0. If you're above the mean, it'll be positive. If you're below the mean, it'll be negative. Z-scores tell us how far away from the mean a particular data value, x value is. Right? Z-scores don't have any units, so it wasn't like 2%. It was just 2 right, right here. So I didn't say this was 1% or 1 degree or $1. It's just 1. So they don't have a unit like that. They have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 because a person who scores the mean would have a z-score of 0. And then z-scores will be very important to us from Chapter 7 onward. You work with z-scores a lot in those later chapters.
So this, this idea is going to come back to haunt you, in other words.